Disputed Land is the story of a family Christmas set in 2008 uh, and it's about a large family coming together in, in quite a rare way, they don't usually do this, uh, and the story is narrated by the 13-year-old grandson of this family, but it's told by him from 50 years in the future. He's looking back to this time. Um, and the, the, the family had been brought together by their grandparents for a very specific reason, and that is that the, the, the old couple want their middle-aged children, the narrator's parents' generation, to sort out the family's possessions um, in good time uh, to remove the possibility of, of arguments in the future. It's a very laudable idea, and I think uh, that this, this old couple have, um, but what it does is it, it creates a kind of focus for buried tensions, which the narrator, with a kind of mixture of, of uh, innocence and naivety, but also a certain acute observation, he, he describes. I guess the theme of disputed land, um, in a nutshell, is the split between, uh, between people, uh, those on the one hand who want an, a need to change the world, to leave the world changed by our presence in it, and those who are content to leave not a trace. And, and so the book is in some ways the, the various characters that are observed by the narrator as well as himself are, are, are kind of variations on, on this theme, or, or each person has a place on a spectrum uh, along that line, because uh, he, re he comes to the conclusion that those who change the world are, are well, change is, is, is inevitably uh, leading us to, uh, to, to ruin, really. With this book and with all of my books, what the, the, the kind of engine that drives them and drives me to write them uh, are these sort of these ideas, the, these issues. Um, but the actual the material, the stuff of the books, is always uh, family dynamics. It's always how uh, these questions are played out through the relationships between people, through the uh, family dynamics. Um, and that's something you know, that's not something that I choose. You know, the, the themes of a book, are, obviously I choose them as a writer, I think about them and I plan them. Uh, what I have little choice over really is the fact that it's, it's always, I always come back to families and how they, they're kind of breaking up and coming together again and, and how different relationships play out over time. Um, and that's, yes, that's really, that's always the, the kind of the stuff of the book. The, the, the grandmother of the family, Rosemary, is uh, a, a very strong uh, personality and matriarchal figure in the family. And um, she's always been rather, rather uh, haughty. And, but on this particular visit, her children and grandchildren notice that she's, she's uh, increasingly eccentric in her behaviour and also in, in the way that she speaks to people. And, she, uh, she, it's, it's her who has brought them together to divide up the possessions. And she delivers at various times in the book uh, rants, really, uh, against, um, against things that her children do that affect the environment. Um, and they're very unreasonable. I realised when I created the the character she is similar to the grandmother in my first novel, In the Place of Fallen Leaves. I wanted to create an unreasonable character, um, who, who, but someone who I found that I actually I agreed with. So she comes out with all sorts of kind of crazy things. She, for example, she berates her son, the father of our narrator, um, for teaching on a course in Oxford where he lives. Uh, which is designed to encourage people to come from abroad to Oxford th on, on an, a, a year-long course at weekends, to fly in for a weekend's of, uh, teaching and fly out again. And um, she, she, in, in one of her rants, she tells him that he should give the money that he's earned for doing this to the, uh, to the uh, action, the protest group tr attempting to stop the extension of Heathrow Airport. Um, 
which is kind of absurd, but I, uh, you know, I, I realised that I th agreed with her, as the narrator does. The boy thinks, uh, yeah, she's right.